Hi, Sagittarius, and welcome to your monthly tarot reading for July. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope that you're doing well. This is a general reading that could benefit any sun, moon, or sign in Sagittarius, and uh, it's a um, uh, way for us to get a little insight and guidance in any messages that may come up for Sagittarius during July. Okay, so let me just take a moment here to look at the cards. Okay, so the first two cards that I'm going to choose is the Awareness for the Week. Okay, so we're starting with the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands brings this energy of someone who is in command of her self and her energy and her ability to deal with many, many things. She's able to successfully multitask. She is charismatic. She's a leader. She's also uh, kind and loving and aware as well, but really fun-loving, seeking uh, enjoyable activities, you know, taking advantage of this fire energy, a sense of really um, exercising your own personal charisma and personal power. So when I see the Queen of Wands, I get a sense that you're going to be moving it and shaking it for the week and maybe making a lot of lunch dates or setting up meetings, perhaps for, you know, your hobbies could be related to work, but there's a real sense of movement here of a can-do energy, of getting things done, uh, following what excites you. So then we have the Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles brings uh, this pentacle energy, earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. And we see the man here taking a time out. And he's looking at his pentacle bush and he may be wondering, wow, this is taking forever. Is it ever going to become ripe? Am I ever going to finish this task? And so he has put into it a lot of time and energy and his resources and focus to be able to get to this point. So you may be thinking to yourself, I'm working on this project or I'm, you know, been putting in all these um, hours for my, uh, for my degree or my certification and I just don't feel any closer. Well, you know, you are close. And so with the Seven of Pentacles, that sometimes it's good to take a break and to think about your work. Can it be improved? Can it be made more efficient? And if this is in respect to um, nurturing a relationship, of taking the time and, and designating and giving the right amount of time to the relationship and having patience. Really, this is a card of patience. Not everyone is so patient, but if you are patient, then ultimately you will reap the reward of the Seven of Pentacles. So now let's choose two cards for guidance. Okay, so we have the Major Arcana, we have the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune, this is about the Wheel of Life. And that Wheel of Life is always turning, it's always spinning. Things are in motion constantly. We may not feel like they are, but they are. And so events come and go within our, our lives. You know, some are good, some are not so good. And we have to be flexible. We have to learn how to deal with these things. So you may feel that the pace of your life this week is picking up and that things are moving quickly. And perhaps it's the movement of wanting to get things done, as the Queen of Wands would have you do, of setting up meetings or 
you know, uh, just making plans, making plans. And so with the Wheel of Fortune, you know, it's always important to think about how you respond, particularly when something throws you off schedule or disrupts what your original plans were. How do you deal with that? How do you make the most of it? How do you keep it from, you know, really messing you up? And so with the Wheel of Fortune, it's about perhaps things are picking up for you. And, you know, the events that come and go, you may be facing a decision. And this decision, uh, you might need more time before you make that decision. You just may need to think about it. There's no harm in taking the time and being patient in whatever decisions that you have to make. So then, here's the youthful version of our fire energy with the Page of Wands. And so this Page of Wands could suggest that it's someone within your circle, family, co-worker, with this youthful energy seeking, seeking excitement, seeking experience, wanting to do things, to again get up and go, and wanting to bring all of life into his or her hands. And so this is another case for you. It's another justification for you to, you know, what's the expression? Is it make hay while the sun shines? I don't, I don't know that that's it or not. But, you know, go out there and make things happen. Go take control. And, you know, do the things, again, it comes down to your passions, to your excitement. He's dressed in this red frock and red is about what is it that you are passionate about and if you are unable to have your passions as your main career you know find uh, the things that can satisfy it as a side hustle so if you enjoy painting but your real job doesn't allow you the time during the day then create some time on the weekend to do what you love, or an hour or two each night. Sit and get the paints out. Start um, being inspired. Be inspired here. Be in command, and be in control, and be inspired. And finally, I'm going to choose two cards for possible outcomes for the week. So interesting, we have the Nine of Pentacles. And this woman is in her walled garden. She has a lot of pentacles. She has a lot of grapes. She has a beautiful outfit on and she has the bird on her gloved hand. So a couple things here. This is really a card of being independent and being sufficient and creating the life that you want. She has created a comfortable life. She is enjoying it. Along the way, she probably had to sacrifice. She probably had to work hard. She may have had to really network and to make connections and to put herself out there. So this is a card of really of building the type of home that you want and the lifestyle that you want. So she's solo in this. And so we have this idea of independent, being independent, working hard, but also enjoying the fruits of your labor. So what's interesting is having it near the lovers. So, you know, what I would say is when we see the lovers, this is an opportunity for you to connect with someone where it could be a serious and transformative relationship, one where there's passion, one where there's excitement, one where there's intimacy, laughter, 
they're without their clothes on. They are vulnerable. They are open to whatever their experience brings them. Sometimes when we lay it all out there, we run the risk of getting hurt. We, get, we run the risk of being let down. So if you are looking for someone, if you're interested in having a partnered relationship, then this speaks favorably that you're in a position to meet someone. And again, you can't be sitting idly by. You have to, you have to go make it happen. So with this lover's card, it's a matter of A, putting yourself in a position to meet people, and B, once you've met someone, getting to know them, getting to see how you both think about core values, what your hopes and your dreams are, are they in alignment? And then you will begin to make these decisions as part of either a unit or not. You know, when you meet people and you've just started dating, you, get, you have to get to know them. If you're in a relationship, if you're married, this can go toward strengthening your bond to um, creating maybe a new level of appreciation, revisiting your relationship, talking about it, communicating about it. So, you know, when I see this lovers close to this wheel of fortune, I get a sense that fortune's going to change in your favor when it comes to relationships. But you're going to You'll have to be independent. You may have to change your way of thinking, perhaps. And you have to be a go-getter. You know, the stork doesn't bring the partner to the front door. You have to open the door and walk out and go for it. And so I really think that a message here, it's about the patience, whether this is work or the patience in nurturing a relationship, fortune changes. The universe throws us breadcrumbs, which we tend to follow sometimes. We're seeking our passion. We're seeking uh, the youthful spark. And then we're going to uh, have this opportunity for this very loving and deep relationship. So let's get some more information for this reading. So I'm going to choose an oracle card for Meditation or a practice area? Daydream. So this says you will more easily hear and receive our messages if you daydream regularly. Relax and open your mind to receiving without directing your thoughts. Just notice any feelings, visions, or ideas if you were watching a movie, as if you were watching a movie. This is the seat of creativity. It's really letting it flow within. Being open, being aware, trusting the messages that you do receive. But you have to open up your eyes, you have to open up your heart as well to get the messages to flow through. So a lovely card to let yourself daydream. There is no harm in daydreaming and calming your thoughts and just letting them, uh, just letting the messages seep through. So now I'm going to choose an oracle card for uh, emotional self or spirit. Again, daydream, and here we have dream talk. Your subconscious constantly and subtly speaks through your dreams. It's just one of the many ways in which your soul and those here in the spirit world can reach out and communicate with you through signs, symbols, messages, and more. Again, pay attention to your dreams. All types of delicious messages come through in our dreams, and sometimes we forget them when we wake up, or they linger. Uh, so pay attention. 
to your dreams and daydreaming with the idea of letting creativity and letting ideas just float in and out. And finally, let's get some more information on love since we do see the lovers here with this reading today. Spend some quality time together. It's imperative that we spend quality time with those we are in significant relationships with, listening and talking to each other. So listening, spending time, creating a sacred space for those that you love, honoring the relationship. These are all wonderful things to think about for the week. How can you tell someone that they're important to you? How can you share and, you know, be together and really find harmony and find joy and find happiness? I think you have an awesome reading for the week and I hope that you have a fantastic week. If you found this reading enjoyable or helpful, please subscribe, like, share, or comment and I will see you again next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.